Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Natalia Gavrilitsa, who is the vice president of the ruling party of Action and Solidarity in Moldova. She was also prime minister of Moldova from August 2021 until she resigned in February of this year. Well, thank you so much for joining us, now, uh, Natalia Gavrilitsa. Uh, we we'll have some news today that the European Parliament has in fact passed a resolution talking about the strategic importance of Moldova joining the European Union. It is already, it has membership status or um, uh, candidate. candidate status. Uh, how important is this resolution that was passed today to Moldova? We welcome very much uh, the passing of this resolution by European Parliament. Uh, the European Parliament has not only recognised that Moldova's EU membership is a geostrategic uh, uh, investment in uh, a united and strong Europe. Uh, and it has also talked about the hybrid threats that we are facing and the energy blackmail, blackmail that we are facing uh, from Russia. Uh, and this is very important for our people to know that the efforts that Moldova is making on the path towards uh, accession to the European Union which means peace, stability, security and prosperity uh, are being recognised. Now, uh, within Moldova, can you give us an idea, what is the proportion of people who are actively keen on joining the European Union? Uh, we saw in the last elections an overwhelming uh, majority of people voting for the Party of Action and Solidarity, which I represent, uh, which has a very strong stance uh, on joining the European Union, and this number uh, is uh, increasing, uh, especially after the war in Ukraine. Moldova has been severely affected uh, by the war in Ukraine. It is a, uh, a collateral victim of this war, but also it is actively involved in a hybrid war with Russia. Now, the government in Moldova maintains that uh, protest movements, there have been a wave of protest movements recently in the country, and the government maintains that behind those movements uh, is a particular Russian oligarch and certainly Russian interests, and that they have been pushing this protest movement, which is calling for, amongst other things, the resignation of the president, Maya Sandu. What evidence do you have for this Russian interest behind this uh, group, these protests? You say they want to install a pro-Russian government. So these protests are organized uh, by uh, uh, the person who has uh, uh, committed a banking fraud uh, that saw 12% of GDP uh, leave Moldova through uh, siphoning money through state-owned banks. Uh, and this, is, uh, this has been recognized uh, uh, also by the court. Uh, just uh, uh, last week, uh, the courts in Moldova issued an executive and final ruling uh, sentencing this person to 15 years uh, in prison uh, and also um, ordering the confiscation of uh, a certain sum of money, uh, which is uh, a, significant, um, a significant act of uh, fairness uh, for the Moldovan people. And uh, the most recent protest, we have had evidence from our prosecution office about illegal payments. So we have seen seizures of cash uh, in Moldova, but also we saw the decision of the State Department, uh, which sanctioned uh, this individual along with others who have captured state institutions previously. Uh, and committed the banking fraud. Uh, and uh, the document issued by the State Department clearly indicates to evidence of uh, Russian meddling in Moldova's democratic process. And how does it work? You maintain that they prey on people's uh, problems, Poverty. people's yes. uh, annoyance with uh, government policies as they are. That sounds like a very easy way out uh, for failing to fix problems for Moldovan people. Uh, can you expand on, on how you think this works, this protest movement? So uh, uh, we had a very difficult year in 2022. Uh, the decrease of GDP was 6%. Uh, and at the same time, we had very high inflation. 
at some point in 2022, it was above 30 uh, percent. Now it has come down, but still we are clearly in stagflation territory because of the consequences of the war and the and Russia's energy blackmail. So, for example, prices for energy in Moldova increased by six times for gas and two to three times for electricity. And uh, this year, in 2022, we have completely diversified away from Russian gas from 100% dependency. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, this is the same uh, uh, phenomena that are affecting people all over Europe, but uh, the magnitude of the impact for Moldovan people is much larger. And the government has increased uh, pensions, has increased salaries, um, and at the same time, it has provided a targeted energy vulnerability subsidy. Um, but uh, still, uh, there is a lot of insecurity and there are falling real wages. So people under these circumstances uh, are a very easy prey, as you mentioned, uh, for uh, those who want to destabilize Moldova. And amongst those who are enthusiastic about joining the European Union. Is there a generational divide? And do we see sometimes what we see in some Eastern European countries, a mismatch between traditional, perhaps Eastern, East European values and European Union values on societal issues? Well, uh, in Moldova, we have had uh, falling standards of living because of uh, uh, corruption, and uh, I mentioned the banking fraud, which happened in uh, 2014. So people are very much uh, looking towards building good governance, towards reducing corruption, reforming the judiciary sector. And we are seeing very clear steps uh, of uh, the ruling majority, President Maya Sandu, uh, and uh, both the former and the current government, uh, to um, move along with an external evaluation of judges and prosecutors, with a reform uh, in the Superior Council of Magistrates and other reforms uh, to improve uh, rule of law. And uh, we have seen significant efforts uh, to reduce corruption. So Moldova currently uh, is one of the five uh, top countries that progressed on its uh, Transparency International uh, Corruption Perception Index. So um, I think that uh, the majority of the people who support the EU, the dividing lines uh, are not as much uh, uh, between uh, those who uh, are older or those who are younger. It's more towards those who are looking towards a uh, pro-European future, uh, which means, as I said, you know, stability, prosperity and peace. Uh, and uh, those who think that um, if we go and uh, ask Russia nicely, then perhaps we would get better prices. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we are seeing that this is not how uh, Russia takes decisions. Uh, we should talk about, uh, as we're talking about the European Union, the uh, status of Transnistria, Gaguzia. These are uh, uh, a breakaway territory in the case of Transnistria, which has hosted Russian military for decades. Uh, Gaguzia, many people there watch uh, Russian state television. How on earth would uh, this work with uh, European Union membership? How do you propose to deal with the issue of Transnistria and Gaguzia? Well, um, we are seeing uh, stability, um, even though it is a very tense situation in the Transnistrian region. Um, and uh, I want to say that because we have signed an association agreement with the EU and a deep and comprehensive free trade agreement, we have actually seen how the trade of goods and services from the Transnistrian region even has reoriented towards the EU. And there are voices there who, um, want, you know, uh, to do business with the European Union and uh, uh, enjoy a stable uh, situation. Um, and uh, in terms of Gagauzia, we have a clearly regulated uh, autonomy and uh, we are working on fighting disinformation and uh, giving people the true uh, information about uh, uh, how, how these reforms uh, that we are 
uh, implementing are first and foremost to improve their prosperity, their um, economic outlook, uh, and only after that it's uh, for the EU. So it's not that we are, uh, you know, looking to join uh, the EU uh, for for the sake of of, of uh, uh, the name only. No, we are ready to do the hard work. We are ready to transform the country because this is actually better for the Moldovan people. We have very little time left. I did just want to ask you very quickly, you recently passed a law making Romanian the official language in Moldova. A lot of people speak Russian in Moldova. Is, is this a good time to do that? Language is so tied to identity. Um, of course, you know, in reality, we have been speaking and writing in Romanian all along. Uh, the so-called Moldovan language was an invention uh, uh, during the Soviet Union, and it took a while uh, for uh, this to be recognized. But this was a decision of the Constitutional Court, uh, and uh, uh, a law passed uh, with overwhelming majority by Parliament, and we are seeing support for this decision because it actually just recognizes the reality, what the it reality is. Of. Yeah. Well, I think sadly we are now out of time. Natalia Gavrilitsa, thank you for joining us. Uh, I think uh, Moldova is a country which has increasingly uh, garnered interest around the world because of its particular position uh, uh, since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Thank you so much for being our guest today on the interview. And thank, thank you for watching.